morning, everyone, again. Uh, Esther, yeah, thank you so much. I'm actually buzzing all with ideas and thoughts about it. But yeah, it's a shame we cannot really meet up and discuss actually more. We just can't. Yeah, these are the limitations of those kind of formats, of course. Um, it is uh, a great pleasure for me to uh, introduce my dear colleague, uh, Professor Mark Kukuberg, um, who is a professor of philosophy of media and technology at the University in Vienna. And um, this uh, short introduction is, of course, not representational of <laughs> the whole work uh, spectrum he's, he's, um, he's uh, dealing with. But his main uh, focus on ethics um, of technology and, in particular, robotics and artificial intelligence, I guess, as most of you know. Um, his recent um, engagements are um, on um, ethics, um, AI ethics in climate technology and political philosophy, which is the work area we actually also collaborate on. And um, he's the Vice Dean um, of the Faculty of Philosophy and Education and the former president of the Society for Philosophy and Technology. And um, he has also further um, memberships in entities that deal with uh, policy and regulation of technology, like the European Commission's High-Level Expert Group on Artificial Intelligence and the Austrian Council on Robotics and Artificial Intelligence. Um, he's presenting um, a new paper today that I'm also very excited to hear about because we don't collaborate as much on robotics. Um, so about the Ubuntu robot and um, yeah, I give over to Mark and um, looking forward to hear more. Thank you very much uh, for this introduction. And um, yeah, I was thinking for today, what should I do? Or what kind of paper? One option would have been virtual virtue ethics paper, which would also fit it very well with Esther's presentation. Um, but I think this one could also be, be interesting. Let me let me share this. It's um it's um basically um a, a new one um on, on called the Ubuntu robot. And um yeah what is what is shared with Esther here is is a I think an attempt to find a more relational framework and um, in this case, this goes towards intercultural robotics. Do you, do you all see um, the, the screen with the, the big slide, kind of the single slide thing? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. okay, great. Then, um, then I continue from here. Um, so basically, um, it's, it's, uh, it's a, a small contribution to um, an emergent field, cultural robotics, and um, it's connect on the one hand connecting back to work I did on trying to understand like the meaning of technology and on the other hand it's um, yeah, trying to get in more diversity in, in the, the kind of views um, that are considered and you know that, that can be done on the one hand by um, by looking in the Western tradition where, where there is already some diversity and I think Iris Murdoch represents a very interesting, um, uh, facet of the Western tradition that is often not considered, but um, in, yeah, in this case, I, said, I, I go more this, uh, uh, outside uh, the Western tradition, in particular, um, the, the concept and philosophy of Ubuntu. So the, the, the background for this is that there has been um, already some work and, and many calls for uh, more cultural robotics. Um, and um, that, that has taken people in various directions. Um, for example, in um, Robertson's work and in, in, in Savanovich's work, there's interest in, in Asian views in uh, robots in, in Japan. Um, uh, I also have done in the, in the beginning work on that. Um, there's also um, a critical thinking about um, robotic futures um, and, and th this can also have a, have a cultural aspect, including the material culture. Um, there's also in, in computer ethics, um, more generally, there is there's intercultural work, for example, Rafael Capuro and Charles S. have, have done work there. Um, and um, the, the robot philosophy conferences of the last years have always been, um, uh, you know, giving attention to this theme and, and especially of course the, the 2021 on culturally sustainable robotics um, so i think these efforts uh, next to others have have been instrumental in getting this on the on the research agenda uh, but of course it's it's you know much more work is, is necessary 
and um, I think people are doing that now. And, and so some go um, again to to the Asian traditions. I personally also will continue that by by talking to um, people in in Japan uh, later this year. Um, but there's also um, I think other parts of culture, right? And the culture doesn't always have to mean mean, mean um, uh, looking in, in one direction. I think there are many, um, there's, there's a lot of diversity on this planet and African approaches are often ignored there. So um, a, a year ago, I started doing research on that and um, I found Ubuntu an interesting concept because it seems to support um, what I've called relational perspectives and um, and yeah, I think um, also helps to, to make specific points as, as I would show. Um, the, the background, you know, when, when one does intercultural anything, especially intercultural philosophy, um, one should also be aware that there are various views on how to do that, also in ethics. And um, so some say that there is no com compatibility of different cultural views. Um, others disagree with that. I, I think there's always some compatibility. Um, but in any case, um, the work of Panikar is quite influential there. And what, what I do like in his work that he, that he talks about the pluralism, and I think at a descript, this, uh, sorry, descriptive level, um, uh, there's definitely a, um, a plural, I think plur pluralist approach makes sense um, to say that both within a culture and between cultures, um, there is this plurality and, and it's, it's uh, fruitful to uh, have dialogues uh, between these different views. Um, also in Panikari, we find this relational perspective of persons as uh, you know, being defined in terms of a set of relationships. Um, so th that's interesting. Um, also another thing to learn from intercultural philosophy is that intercultural also means intracultural in the sense that um, one has a dialogue with others from other cultures, but also um, we, it always reflects back on ourselves, on our own culture, our own myths, and, and uh, our own, you know, what, what we call reality. And I think that's, a, that's also a kind of second deeper um, argument for doing intercultural work. Um, the, the idea is um, not only to get to know the other, but also to, um, you know, to let the, the, the other culture also influence one's own culture. Um, and, and that's, the, the, I think, the really risky part of doing this because um, it requires some destabiliz destabilization, just as moral philosophy, for example, uh, can also destabilize one's uh, own moral views. Um, intercultural philosophy can destabilize uh, the views of the culture, the, the, one's own worldview. Um, destabilize sounds negative, but the idea is then that, yeah, that, that there's change and transformation possible. So this is just to, to sketch the, the background of this. Um, then I, I um, look back at the, the um, work on Wittgenstein that I did, um, because I think one can start with a question like, okay, how does robotics then, in social robotics, how does social robotics um, link to um, to culture, what is, what is the what is the, the relation there between robotics and culture, and um, I make that relation by saying like well, um, just as Wittgenstein says that the meaning of words has to be always looked at in a, in a context one could interpret as a, a cultural context. Um, we could also say that um, yeah, the, 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 for technology this is also true. So Wittgenstein uses two concepts, language games and form of life to say that, that use of language is embedded in a wider culture. And um, I proposed um, in, uh, in a paper called technology games and also already in using words and things um, to, to say like, well, why not apply this also to technology because technology use um, is also related to, to what we do, to our activities to games, to form of life, so to a kind of social and cultural goals. And um, so in, in that sense, just as words are embedded in, in those games and in form of life, I think artifacts are also embedded in uh, games and form of life. Um, and that means on the one hand that they're 
yeah, indeed embedded in, uh, meaning that the, the culture um, shapes uh, how we use technology. So we have rules, for example, uh, like if we have, for example, the social media game has certain rules, uh, social game that, that um, you, you do some things rather than others and um, you follow, follow the unwritten rules of that. Um, but um, there's also another uh, direction, namely that, that our technologies also change the game. And one could say that uh, digital technologies in general have really radically transformed um, human societies and cultures um, through their use uh, in the last decades. And so the question is then robots, what, what will they do also, right? So um, on, on the one hand, uh, the question is that of embedding, uh, so a successful uh, social robotics needs to be able to embed the artifact within uh, social and cultural gains, within a form of life, within ways how to do things. Um, for example, if you want a robot to serve coffee, then coffee is not just this, this thing. It's, uh, it, it's, it's uh, related to, to cultural ways of doing things, to having coffee together, for example, to serving coffee. And, and so, um, a social robot would have to have that kind of knowledge in order to be culturally sustainable. Um, but also maybe the robot can, um, yeah, can contribute also to changing. Maybe we can um, do different ways of, of doing what we already do. Right? In this example, different creative way of serving coffee that doesn't, isn't human-like. Um, but one could also think about other um, activities that still um, relate to our culture, but but also uh, transform it um, in the, just in the way as as the internet and social media um, have been and are transforming our society. Um, now, this cultural change is usually not very radical, so um, it's it's often slow, um, but one never knows, right? So there, there can be. In, in the case of the, the digital technologies of the last decades, the, the change has been quite fast. Um, so it's good to be aware of that, to be aware that, that, that a technology um, really impacts the wider culture um, and uh, can, can yeah, transform in a positive and negative way. Um, and of course, uh, for development of robotics, I think it's, um, it's great to try to contribute in a creative way to uh, to positive goals in, uh, within the culture and, and to also try to transform the culture in a, in a better way. Um, then uh, my question was, okay, so if that's the general framework, then the question is maybe, um, yeah, should that only mean like that we try to build robots for Western culture or, or are there also other cultures? And what if, if so, which is obvious, what could be then um, the influence of that those other cultures on robotics. Um, so where can we find other sources of inspiration and um, thinking about intracultural, uh, how can we use technology to transform our own um, culture in, the, in this case, as, as I'm speaking in a Western cultural context, Western culture. Um, and then I, then I came across Ubuntu philosophy, um, and uh, I, I think this really helps um, this intercultural aspect, but also the relational perspective, and uh, yeah, fi finding uh, maybe more different creative meanings which we didn't see before within robotics and within uh, Western philosophy. Um, so Ubuntu, what is Ubuntu? It's an African philosophy and a concept that's relational in the sense that it, uh, as a philosophy, teaches that one can only be human through other people. So an, an um, important figure there is um, Bitti, who uh, said, uh, let's move away from, uh, I think, therefore I am, the, the Cartesian um, uh, slogan, and rather uh, do I am because we are, and since we are, therefore I am. So the we here is, is important. Um, it's not just about the I. The I is always related to the we. Um, that doesn't mean that individuality is denied, so there, um, there are persons, but they're understood in a relational way themselves. Um, and, and this has also kind of developmental and, and process character in the sense that, that we become who we are 
um, um, BT speaks about in individuals, I would speak about persons, but we, we become what we are uh, um, through th this we, um, we become conscious of our duties and responsibilities also um, and, and, and privileges which are all related also to the social. So it's not just here about um, developing the, 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 the fat self, right? So it's, it's um, to refer to the, the previous presentation. Um, so politically speaking, Ubuntu is, is also um, more about this we, so it's about solidarity, distribution of wealth within a community, um, bonds between people, which means uh, you know that there is identity, there's belonging, but also the other side of uh, is also responsibility. Today, often identity in, in a political context are often uh, related to the question like what can I get, or what do I deserve, what do other people own to me. Um, here, the question would be, you know, what, what are my responsibilities, my social responsibilities? So I find that very interesting for political philosophy. Um, so obligations are not only to ourselves, and, and, but to our one's community. And um, yeah, I, I think this should not just be, be um, related to Africa in the sense that we should think that, oh, so Ubuntu is all over the place in Africa. Uh, it is in various countries and communities, but um, also in Africa, of course, there is uh, individualism. There, there are um, urban centers where um, Western culture is very influential, or where one could say that, that a specific form of individualism is also developed. So also within um, the African continent, th there's a lot of diversity and um, uh, the tension between individualism and, and some kind of we uh, philosophy um, is, is also there in, within Africa. Um, and Mbiti already discussed this uh, end of the 60s uh, of the last century, um, when he said like, yeah, when people move to the city, that's, that's a kind of new form of life. So think again about Wittgenstein, form of life. So we, we have this, this larger, more vague kind of cultural whole that, that shapes us. And um, it's, it's, um, it's not just up to the individual um, to, to immediately change that. Uh, so we find ourselves in, in context when we move somewhere. I think that's also clear for everyone who moves from uh, between different countries. Um, so individualism is, of course, also a form of life. Yes, yeah? so it's not only uh, uh, Ubuntu. And um, yeah, th that's also uh, is related then to specific identities and so on. Um, so we're, we're always embedded within a form of life, whether it's a, um, a Western individual one or, an, or another one. Um, but we, in, in, at, at a more fundamental level, even if we don't think our, of ourselves as relational, as often happens in Western modern philosophy, um, we actually are uh, in, in this relational state of being. And, and uh, it's good to become aware of that, um, because otherwise the, there's, a, there's a risk yeah, of forgetting this embedding of one's own uh, thinking, and therefore the risk of uncritical thinking. Um, so individual of the West, individualism of the West fails to recognize things as basic relational nature, and uh, that can be justified by this um, Ubuntu view that recognizes the, the truth and value of um, some deeper connectedness and interdependence. Um, so then the question is like, okay, if we have now this um, we have this view of meaning of, of technology is related to um, this cultural context. We, we diversify what culture means. What does it mean then this discussion for social robotics? Well, um, one could say that social robotics also, if one does on, in pur on purpose do this, they're always engineered for a specific cultural context or form of life. And if that form is Western, and, Individual, individualistic, can also be African, in, uh, urban individualistic, then, um, yeah, one could say that robots are designed for individuals. And um, then it's, it's challenging, I think, to, to think like, what it would it mean to, to design robots for th this we Ubuntu talks about? Um, for example, in the West, we see that robots are, are designed as, as companions, so social robotics 
part of what it does is giving people um, companions, um, a robot to talk with. Um, and this fits within, within this kind of Western context or urban context where people um, are individualized and, um, and that can create feelings of loneliness or even if there's no loneliness, there can be an absence of, of care and solidarity. Um, and um, yeah, care robots are, are then, you know, they, they kind of intervene within that kind of cultural context. Um, so the social in social robotics means then that um, the robot does not really create um, um, a, a social framework uh, that could support individuals, but it, it creates rather, uh, it responds to individual needs within this individualist context. And so if we want to create robots that sustain Ubuntu forms of life, um, we will have different, we will need different kind of robots um, that are not focused on what does the individual want or need or desire uh, from bringing my beer to, um, to care in a, an elderly uh, um, a home for elderly people. Um, so what is then needed is, is rather a robot that, that is focused on the, the group interests, the um, interests of the wider community, um, on the responsibilities also that people have uh, towards that community. Um, things that are larger than ourselves and give that meaning, meaning to technology, meaning to human lives also. So in that sense, like, I think um, if we would develop the Ubuntu robot, it means that the robot is no longer, uh, the robot itself also is no longer seen as an individual, but a member of, of a group. Uh, think also how, uh, how pets are often seen as member of a family. Uh, here robots could be member of a group, for example, uh, or a particular small community. Um, and if the robot then does something, it's not to support a particular individual per se, but because um, we as a group think what has to be, uh, that something has to be done um, and uh, could give, be given this, this social role of, of supporting um, the, the group also and, and not just individuals. So this, is, this would be quite a different normative direction. And um, yeah, uh, I, I think it's interesting to, to see how technology can um, move us to that direction. Um, so we, what it would mean is it would mean a shift from individual to collective. Um, interests of the community are become more important. And um, yeah, I think that that um, that opens up the, the rather limited perspective of robots for individuals to yeah, um, imagining uh, robots for community, robots for collective, for, for social good and so on. Um, so I think both ethically and politically, um, it opens up new um, normative directions for social robotics. Um, of course, when one then uh, does this exercise, um, one can, as a philosopher, ask questions about relativism. Um, I always said that it could be, one could look at a plurality of different cultures. Um, and one can then talk, discuss about what, what does it mean for ethics. Um, in any case, they're, they're, um, at a descriptive level, there are very different ways of doing things. And it looks like a normatively ethically important to recognize that. So here, I think pluralism can be a solution in the way I explained um, based on um, African philosophy, but also in the Western tradition, there, there are frameworks for that. Um, I was thinking about pragmatism, for example, also. Then to, to answer uh, the, the question is like, who needs a, a Ubuntu robot? And, and that's um, asking the political question um, uh, and, and linking politics with culture, because there are all, all kinds of political questions one could ask about this kind of direction. Um, for example, if, if one says like, yeah, we're thinking about um, robots in Africa, the, um, some people could say like, well, this is, a, this is a kind of very Western perspective because if you um, look at the needs of Africa, maybe not always high tech is needed, but also more basic infrastructure, clean water, um, and so on. Um, and so, yeah, what, what we want to avoid is that um, 
that robotics becomes just a Western hobby. And um, I think there's, there's a truth in this. I think we have to be aware of that. Um, it's also true for AI, I think. But it should not be overlooked that, of course, uh, they're highly developed uh, urbanized parts in, in Africa and there are different uh, views also of what development consists in. Um, and I think also within Africa, that there are then, you know, as I said, there are also individualist sites. Um, and, and one could then use a wood inspired perspective also within Africa to, um, yeah, to, to, to create more possibilities for cultural transformation. Um, so I think it's not, the question should not be like building robots for Africa here. The question is really, how can we in the West, in Africa also, um, anywhere really, uh, how can we um, promote a more relational perspective and what's the role of robotics in that? Um, and I, I think that kind of uh, question then is, is also a way to avoid um, a kind of like Orientalism, a kind of Africanism where um, exotic Ubuntu philosophies used to spice up our Western philosophy. I think there should be a more fundamental uh, question about how to get to more relationality. Um, and it can also mean, uh, you know, next to Ubuntu also look in, in, West, in the West what kind of um, perspectives are, are there that um, are different from mainstream ones. Um, so both within the West and, and outside of that. Um, and then we can do um, also this intracultural reflection, like what, um, how can we change our existing culture? How could technologies like robots reflect, help us to reflect on uh, our own culture? Um, and I think that's similar than saying like, yeah, it can, um, robots can reflect on what it means to be human, um, which, which I also say in a forthcoming book, but I think it's, the question can also be asked, what, what um, you know, how can robots assist in reflecting what it means to be human in a particular uh, culture? So I think that opens up a perspective for robot, social robotics that, um, that I think is interesting and that also connects to practice in the sense that um, if we use the Wittgenstein framework, it's really the meaning of the robot. It's not just the, the thing, but how it's used. Uh, and that brings in then also that use context, the games and form of life. So we can study that also. And um, maybe the Ubuntu robot, the title of this paper can also be used for setting up some kind of artistic or scientific project um, in the arts of sci and science world or in, in more the public engagement kind of context. Um, and I think, you know, Boris and I are also interested in, in further develop that idea. Um, but I hope the paper can also help to inspire other efforts in that direction. Um, we should always then, uh, of course, avoid the uh, stereotyping um, and, and also not see the West as monolithic. Um, uh, nevertheless, I think we should take the risk. We should take the risk of doing this kind of intercultural robotics. Um, and um, yeah, once we see technology not as this thing, as this object only, um, uh, but also see te technologies such as robots as um, tools for the examination of ourselves and our cultures, then um, I think uh, intercultural social robotics can help to um, direct us in, into more relational uh, horizons. And um, Af I think African forms of life, including Ubuntu ways of doing things and Ubuntu um, philosophy um, are, are one way that, yeah, that we can develop um, this kind of intercultural social robotics. Thank you.